No, I'll, I'll get it for you, just about it. Okay. And I'll send it to him. Like towards the send to the group, can you, Nathan? As yep. soon as, as far as you can towards the end before the walking out. Yes. After we're signing. And this is like, oh wait, it does save on there. It just takes a little bit to go up. Oh, perfect, okay. So I'll get here and I'll... So these are all pre-recorded um, stuff. Yep, Portrait's good it's all in. there on files ready to play. It's going to be on YouTube. I mean, on Facebook, I mean. No idea. Uh, we were doing it on the side before, but but I don't know what the answer to that is. That's up to you and whatever. How are you? Oh, no. Yes, that's all right. Okay, Listen. so where's the third song? I wasn't listening. So I was doing that. So. He knows. Yes. After we come back from signing. So, bef well, Christian plays a song of love while you're signing, mm -hmm. and then it says recording to be played. That's the first song. Very snazzy today, very well dressed up. And you're six now, aren't you? Seven. You've turned seven already? Oh my goodness me. Be going for your driver's license next, aren't you? And are you four yet? No. Three and a Nathan. Nathan. Yes. It's just cut out. What else? The link. Really? Okay, sure. I don't know. You've got the one. Do you want to go and have a look at it over there? It's over there on that chair. Where's... Okay. Yeah, I'll just look at it here. I'm still... I'm still working on it. It's a bit jumpy. So the modem's over there, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look, there is a slight possibility that the modem will stop working, but only if it drops. If it, that's if Wi-Fi switches off on here and on here, but it should be alright otherwise. Let me know if you need help. I don't know. Hears me? Don't know. Haven't seen anything, heard anything. I mean, the, the reason. The awkward thing is, I wanted to go to the toilet. <laughs> That's gold, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to find uh, me. Okay, no, um, Sam wants to play. Okay. As long as you don't broadcast me when I'm in the loop. Can I go? Go. Two seconds? Um, just leave them on. Um, yeah, how do I do that? Turn it off. I can turn it off. I can turn the yes, mic off. Yes, turn the mic off, yes. Yeah. Yes, they can hear. You. Okay, good. Not in the toilet. Okay. Righto. Um, 2395 to get into the schedule. 2395. 2395. 2395. I was yep. born in 95. I was 23 when I made it. Okay. 2395. Yep, gotcha. So, because I've turned the face ID off, so you'll just be a simple. Yep. I can't take it off because I've got the card set up on it. That's yep, too hard. Okay. Messenger? Mm hmm. Tito la cosa. Right. See, that's the group one. And just hit. And just hit the video call. Yep. Yep. Okay. And and that's that's enough of her friends and family yep. right in there. Okay. Can you pop that in? Okay. 
is on silent, but all those other messages are coming down for all. Okay, and um, I'm just going to stand there when they all come through. And after, um, once she's gone past, then I'll come to the front. Is that the idea? Probably, probably for us. Yep. Probably for us, when Rebecca comes, if you could be at the front, because I'm going to walk up and meet her halfway. Right, so that's going to be So once the bridesmaids are finished, I'll move to the front. Yes. Okay. Yes, move to the front, because she'll come, and by the time she gets to the middle, I'll come forward and, and meet her. So, that's probably so I'll get all of her from there. Hello. Yes. Do you guys want all good. some water? Oh, yes, please. That'll be sensational. <laughs> Back on. Uh, am I? Was I ever off? I'm not sure. Can test just... one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Oh yeah, good. There you go, David. Yeah, good. Nice. Yeah, I'm on. Yep, good. Unscrew this because you're going to have to start handheld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just undo that and you have to turn that as you slide it past. So just do it now? Yep, so this is your tightening and that's your release. As you pass that point, you have to turn that button every time. Okay. I'm going to go live TV. Hello. Um, is that live? Yeah, sure it is. Okay. I need a hand from you. I knew you were going to do that. What do you want? There's a little tripod over there. Yeah, yeah. Might yeah. scroll the front. Makes yeah. a big difference standing right where I am. Front. Can you just I'm soaking it up. <laughs> Why? Because you want it. What? You're sitting out of the frame no, at the moment. I'll need that oh. tripod once it all comes. I'll be standing at the front filming them, and yeah. you can just pass it to me. Okay. And wherever you're standing. Yeah, I'll just put it my yeah, arm out. You can just give it to me. Little dog. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Maybe on my left. Anyways, how do you are they live streaming? Yeah. Already? Yeah. Like Amy. Yeah. yeah. Already. That's crazy. I think. Huh? Is it working? Jim, do I see it? Well, I just <laughs> want to dial the people to sit down first. <laughs> oh, who's that? Chongy. 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 One on each of the eggs. Oh, what is it? Oh, snap. 
Now we have sound. I believe we're about ready to begin. So should you like to find a nice warm seat, please find it now. I know, it's like that. For those present, a couple of things to keep in mind. There is a dam behind us here. Uh, so watch little children. Uh, there could be snakes about as there are in this time of year. So just be aware of that. Uh, do please take care in the gardens here. So they, they do um, to put a lot of effort in to look after them. So watch where you walk and things. <clears throat> there was a COVID safe plan that uh, was previously distributed. So we want to be aware of social distancing and particularly hand hygiene. There are somewhere over in the green over this side is um, hand sanitizer that's been provided. So please make use of that. And for toilets, the ladies are privileged to use the residence here. I believe I haven't seen it, but there is a toilet you can find over there. The gentlemen are privileged to use this portaloo down down the back in the trees. Help yourselves. And that's about all I've been told to say. So I think we're just about ready.
probably right. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, we are here in the sight of God and the presence of these witnesses to unite these two lives in holy matrimony. And we want to ask God's blessing and presence here with us, very first thing. And so, just like to invite you to join in prayer, those who may be able to kneel, otherwise bow your heads. Let's pray. Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for your love and mercy to each of us as your children, that you give us family, that you give us the fellowship of our association together, and that you've brought these two young people and given them a very special gift of love and brought them together on this day. We ask that you'll be here, that your presence will grace this place and the proceedings of today that the home that is formed may receive your special uh, seal and that these two may walk a path of joy, hope, and peace as they journey together through this world. And so we thank you that you hear this prayer and you answer in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. This item that will be played is from first one from Hungary, correct? You should be able to follow along on the screen if you can see it.
Today I represent both the Commonwealth of Australia and the Christian faith as we solemnize this sacred union. And today we'll conform to the laws of the land in certifying and registering the vows that will be made. But beyond this, we recognize that marriage was created by God. And he himself performed the very first wedding. And Sam and Rebecca believe that marriage is still as sacred as it was when it was created. And that God, who united the very first man and the very first woman and called them one, has also promised uh, for couples today, as they unite together and they create a family, uh, he will bless those unions. And he is the one who put the desire in us to unite together. It is his love that, that unites. It's a gift that he has given. And he gave us the gift of family. And so they will. They'll form a new family. It's God's intention that this union will be a little heaven on earth. That's the plan. Before we proceed with those vows, let's take a few moments to meditate on what marriage is about and what love means. Do you know God in the very beginning, it says he created mankind in his own image. And now what I find interesting is that when God created humans in his image, it took two to reflect him. It took a man and a woman to reflect the image of God. And that's very special. And God said it is not good that the man should be alone. He's created Adam first. And then he said it is not good that the man should be alone. I think Samuel would agree with that. Amen. And so God said, I will make, in the old Bible it says, an help meet for him. That means a suitable helper. And they, they came together. It says in Genesis that a man should leave his father and mother and unite with his wife, and the two would become one. And that's a very interesting process and a very interesting concept. And I told them that, you know, the first year or so is going to be the most difficult, but that's because you're, you're knitting together, you're joining together, and you're, you're learning you think you know each other, but you're just getting started, right? And so you'll learn many things. Uh, and that's to be expected. But that's because now you're learning how to be one. You're two different people from two different parts of the world and two different cultures, uh, but you have a lot of things in common. You're going to build on that, and you're going to unite together. And so marriage is called honorable. God's intention for marriage is the closest and most tender of any. It was designed to be a blessing. And when we enter this covenant, with due regard for its uh, responsibilities intelligently, then it can have God's blessing on it and be successful. You know, Jesus performed his first miracle at a wedding, at a wedding reception. It was his first miracle that he performed. And so I believe that he has a great interest in what we do here today. As long as we put him, obviously, we want to put him the first and if you maintain that perspective, you'll have his full blessing. He's a witness. So we will sign with witnesses here, but Jesus is the, the ultimate witness. And he's ensure that he'll be with you. And there's a spiritual parallel when marriage actually illustrates a relationship to the relationship of God. And the scripture actually Christ did, self-sacrificing. I suppose we're naturally a bit selfish. And so, you know, that was a good thing for us to remember, that, that um, Jesus gave everything for us. And so the secret to happiness is to give for one another. You know, and there's something in marriage, uh, something in the relationship with God that sort of informs marriage and how we relate to each other. But there's something experienced in marriage that helps us understand our relationship with God. And so you two will begin to learn more and more of those lessons. And they can help you, both spiritually, so with yourself, the spiritual life helps the family life, and the family life teaches you about the spiritual life. So it's a great journey that you'll be entering on today. And just remember that the example of Christ was self-sacrificing love, and that's what can really help you as you go forward from today.
Now, you know, love has been compared to a plant. Now, Sam knows a little bit about plants and caring for plants. And Rebecca, you know that plants need special care. All right, so love is a plant, and it needs to be looked after. What I would like to do is look at a few things that are characteristics of love, and that will help us to know how the love plant is growing. You know, you look at a plant, and you have some evidences of how it's going. Is it growing well or not? And so in the love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13, it gives a number of characteristics of love, and will help you to judge how is love growing? How well is it growing? And I won't go through all of them, there are quite a few, but there's a few that I might like to touch on. I'll read the whole, all the verses from the King James. It says, Charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, charity never faileth. So first we're told that love is long-suffering or patient. That's an interesting one. That, that's the very first one. The principle of self-control is the very first uh, characteristic of love. So love controls itself. It's patient. It thinks before it acts, right? And it's not a feeling because patience is not a feeling, is it? When you lose your patience, that might be a feeling. But patience is not a feeling. It's a principle. And having said that, see, marriage is a place to grow patience. Did you know that? It's a place that you can grow patience. You can work on that quite a bit. You are each an individual. And because you're different, you have to be patient with one another. Sometimes you have faults. Sometimes it's just you're different. And so patience is one of those things. So the love plant will show patience. Right? So that's one way you can check the growth of love as you have those opportunities to develop patience. It also says that it's kind. And you know, sometimes we're patient, but we're begrudging about it. I'm being very patient with you, but I'm not having a good time, you know, and I'm going to make you feel it. Well, that's, you see, right after patience is kindness, you see. And home is where you are the real you, because outside you can say and appear to be anything. But at home, the masks come off, and you are who you are, right? And so remember, kindness goes a long way there. Ephesians says, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And it's interesting that forgiveness is associated with kindness. So you're patient, but you also forgive. Not just, I'm putting up with you, but I don't like this, and I'm going to remind you, but actually to actually be kind and forgiving as well. Those are the first two characteristics of love. It also says that love does not boast. That's what it means to vaunt. And it's interesting, Proverbs says, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. And so, you know, in a marriage, you have a unique opportunity that you don't have to praise yourself. If your spouse praises you, that's wonderful. You see, and so that's their job. It's your job to praise each other and not yourselves. And so love is actually not thinking about oneself, but thinking about the other, and thinking about compliments and saying thank you and you know, the little things that make life a joy. It also says it's not proud, it's not puffed up. And so love is not right along with not being self-centered or boasting is pride. Marriage is a good place to develop humility as well, you see? and to learn these lessons. And you will, you do, as you go along. You learn to be humble and all of those other things in kind and so forth. It also says it does not behave itself unseemly or rudely or indecently. Do you know, in marriage, I think of it like this. You need to pledge to always be courteous to each other, right? Now, at the extreme end, being aggressive or being violent is not obviously not acceptable in marriage, you know? But more often it's about taking the odd jab at each other, you know, and being a bit rude, um, you know, and, and all of those sort of things in, are indecent in the sense of marriage. You know, you should you need to treat each other very tenderly, 
and very kindly at all times. Right? That's where the patience and the other things come in. And so love does not behave in any way that, that injures the other person, emotionally, verbally, physically, anything like that. Marriage is a place where you look after each other. Okay? Now that will be tested to some extent. Okay? Maybe just the patience bit, right? but that will be tested. And so you'll have the opportunity to put into practice courtesy even when you may disagree, you may have something going on. Love also is not self-seeking, and that's interesting. You'll have many opportunities to demonstrate unselfishness or selflessness, to see the other person's point of view, to do the way they want instead of the way you want. And understand if they're having a rough day, you know? It's sometimes people need just not to be okay. Uh, that's just where they're at. And so unselfishness recognizes that. You're thinking of the other person rather than yourself. You remaining silent when you, you could make that comment, but now's not a good time and, and things like that. And the thing is, unselfishness is a thing where you both put in. And now you should both be putting in 100%. Because if one puts in more and the other takes, then that becomes unbalanced. And so both of you have to learn that. It's not selfish. Now I'll say that my, you know, I've, I've learned the same thing and there was a scenario where it's late in the night, I wake up, the baby's crying. Normally she wakes up before me and get, but the baby's crying. And I'm lying there and I'm thinking, if I just pretend to be asleep, she'll eventually get up. Right? And that was a test right then of unselfishness. What am I going to do? Am I going to pretend to be asleep or am I going to self, be self-denying because she's so tired and get up? And so you'll have many opportunities as well to develop unselfishness. Philippians has some good advice. It says, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Right? And so that's the fruit of true love. And that love, that self-sacrificing love, has a very high origin. It comes from God himself. And he proved that when God loved the world and he sent his son to die for every single one of us, he demonstrated that kind of self-sacrificing love. And nothing could be too great to give for your spouse when you think of what Jesus has given for us. And so when you put it like that, well, there's nothing too hard to give for the one that you love. It also says that love is not easily provoked. The Proverbs would say it's slow to anger. And so that kind of goes right back to patience, doesn't it? It says that it always it bears all things. That can also be translated as always protects. It gives the idea of a roof, a cover over something. In other words, love does not give out the secrets that should only be kept between you two. Do you know? In the work that I do, I always know that there's something wrong when there's one spouse talking to other people and not their own spouse, you know. And so what you want to do is you want anything that needs to be said needs to be said and kept within that circle, you know. And so sometimes that can be difficult, but you need to, you each need to be the one that receives the communication. And that's wonderful in a relationship because even though sometimes it's hard, but you talk to each other about it, and that energy that you put in to solving that, you feel better when you get it off your chest, but if you're actually speaking to each other, communicating and sorting those things out, then all of that energy goes back into the relationship, and that's where it should stay. And so that's an important thing. If you're talking to someone else, you get it off your chest, but you haven't invested back in. And so love bears all things. It protects. There is a, a, what's known as a sacred circle around the couple that should never be violated. And so... Love bears all things. So you also need to pledge then never to put each other down in public, but to be respectful of one another at all times. And if you have something to say to anyone else, let it be good. And if you have something to complain, well, complain to each other because that's what you have to do. But then, then to the outside world, you're a unit. And that's a very important principle of love as well. And near the end of the list, it says that love endures all things. It always perseveres. And that's really an amazing part of your experience. 
because then it says love never fails. You know, you've proved this in a way because there was no border, there was no bureaucratic paperwork, no delay, no cost, no obstacle that you were not willing to push through to get to this day. And there's been quite a few obstacles. And here you are, nothing was going to stop you. So how enduring is love? Well, you know, the love that has such a strong force like that comes from God. Because that's the kind of love he has for us. You know, Romans says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so the love that is God himself has such a power behind it. And so that's why it says love never fails. And, you know, sometimes we disappoint each other, but God will never disappoint you. And if you can maintain that sort of connection with that source of love, then you will find whatever you need for whatever circumstance and whatever may happen. You know, today you're going to make vows to be together for good and bad and all through everything. It's, well, all those things will happen and they will test you, but love never fails, never fails. And so the things you've experienced now, I believe you've tested that. And as you go forward, may you have an equal amount of determination to make it through whatever's on your road ahead, and God will bless you in all of that. But you know, you don't love by trying to love. And that's a mistake some people make, because they try to construct the plant by themselves. Oh, the plant of love needs, well, I need to be patient, I need to be kind, and so they try really hard to be all those things. But you know, love doesn't try anything. Love just is, you see? And so the wonderful thing is that when you have love, it does all of those things, you see? The growth of the love plant demonstrates the outworking of love that's in your heart. And so in the psalm it says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And Ecclesiastes says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. The thing is that love is something that comes from God. And I believe that the threefold cord includes you, Samuel, you, Rebecca, and God with you. And three-stranded ropes are not easy to break. Everyone knows that. Yeah? And so as long as you have the, the, the love of heaven in your home, then the plant of love will grow and it will prosper. And you will have all of those things from patience all the way through to endurance. You will have those things by virtue of that. Yes, it's tested. Yes, it's exercised. That's what marriage is about. But if you have that threefold cord, then you'll have a source that will lift you above the petty things of this life and our own temperaments and things. You'll have something that lifts you up and gives you a strength that will see you through. And so, Rebecca and Sam, may you find as you cherish that love and make Jesus part of your life, that little seedling which today is just sprouting and just starting to grow will continue to grow and prosper. And may God bless your union today. Amen.
authorized to solemnize this marriage according to law. Before you are joined in marriage in my presence and in the presence of these witnesses, I am to remind you of the solemn and binding nature of the relationship into which you are now about to enter. Marriage according to law in Australia is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others voluntarily entered into for life. And now I require of you both and charge you that if either of you know any case or cause or impediment why you may not be lawfully joined together in my presence in holy matrimony, that you do now confess it. For you may be assured that any couple who are together otherwise joined than in God's word or the law of this land allows are not joined together by God, neither is their marriage lawful. Samuel. Do you have this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony, to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep you only unto her as long as you both shall live? Rebecca, do you have this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony, to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep you only unto him as long as you both shall live. Very well. present to witness that I, Samuel Gilbert Wiseman, take thee, Rebecca Toth, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness, in health, to love and to cherish forever, according to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I give thee my pledge. My dearest love in all the earth, what can I say? Looking at you here now makes me speechless. The fact that we are closer than 15,000 kilometers makes me cry tears of joy, even though we have already been together for five days. I still can't believe it's real. From the first look of your profile on Instagram, I knew you had a heart I wanted to know. Over the next couple of weeks, I gathered enough information to pluck up the courage to follow you. Thank you, Irina, for the insider information. <laughs> Over the next two weeks, I had no idea what was about to happen to my life. Then she messaged me. Since that first three-hour messaging conversation, you have always sparked my curiosity and stirred my heart with feelings I cannot describe. First conversations included, are you single? Would you like to live in Australia? And how many children do you want? <laughs> I noticed very early how much you didn't mind talking to me, as one of my cousins recalls me saying, she even talks as much as me. Long distance has been very difficult, something we learned to do for six months before we even met in person. The joy I felt when we finally were walking towards each other was something I cannot describe. The amazing memories of long distance come to mind. The first video call, the first audio call, the first email and the first handwritten letters, first prayers together on video call. The last year has been very difficult as we navigated the strange new world we face, endeavouring to try our hardest to remain positive and stay strong in faith, never quite knowing if we would ever see each other again. Many days I would wake up heavy in the thought that I may lose you before I had the chance to love you and appreciate your beautiful character. With many, many setbacks and disappointments, I just know there is no one I would rather do this with than you. As we go forward, I ask God to guide us. I ask God to bless us. I ask God to never leave us alone, but give us the assurance of his presence. I vow to put you first in our relationship. 
I promise to continue learning of your character and studying your personality. I promise to make you food anytime you are hungry. I promise to love you with all my heart. I ask God to always remind me to never take for granted the time he has now given us to be together. I vow to encourage you and prepare together our characters ready for heaven. I vow to ask God to help me to be the godly husband he desires me to be. I ask you to be patient with my mistakes and ask you to pray for me that I can be the husband God wants me to be. If you see me working too hard, please remind me there are more things to life than work. I do not take lightly the sacrifice you have made to be with me now, and I just pray that I can show you my love and appreciation every day. Thank you for loving me and showing me the feeling of God's love in real physical actions. There are some phrases I want to use less, like, I'll call you tomorrow, when we are together, and when can we have the wedding? And stand back from the camera so I can see you. With the hundreds of hours of video calling and near 70 to 80,000 WhatsApp messages, I can't wait to reduce the high screen time alerts. But to be with you, I wouldn't change it for anything. Babe, you are the most precious treasure in the world to me. Your kind heart inspires me every day. I can't wait to spend forever with you. I love you. My dear Sam, it is hard to believe that I'm here, but it is real. We have gone through lots of difficulties, but we did together at least. Rejection of our travel exemptions, fl three flight cancels, and nine, nine months of separation. It has been hard in every way. But our love has overcome it every day. Thank you for choosing me as your life partner and wanting this life together. And now let's go back in time to when we lived the singles life. One day I messaged you by chance and you rapidly replied back. That's how we started our journey. Though we didn't know that was the beginning of you and me, I still remember of all our messages, even though our conversations went raging. I can't tell you how happy, happy am I, standing now by your side, as we start a new chapter of our lives. I call upon you, the persons here present to witness, that I, Rebecca Toth, take the Samuel Gilbert Wiseman to be my wedded husband. I want to cherish you forever. I promise you to be faithful wife, whatever comes to us in this life. You are the most handsome man to me, and I'll go proudly everywhere with thee. You always treat me like a princess, and this feeling is always priceless. I want to please you in the same way, and I will be happy to do it every day. I will always I will always be there for you, whatever for whatever you are going through. Our lives will be amazing together, singing, house renovating, cooking, studying, exercising, reading, and night and date nights at dinner. And if God blesses us with children, I am already very very sure you will be the best father for them. I can't wait to start this journey on earth. And my aim is that one day we will praise our Father in heaven where there is no sadness or death.
for as much as Rebecca Toth and Samuel Wiseman have consented to join their lives together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this company and thereto have given and pledged their love to each other and have declared the same by joining of hands, I therefore pronounce by the authority of God's word and the law of Australia that they are now husband and wife. What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Amen. I'll just invite uh, those who are seated to rise and we will kneel for a, spirit, a prayer of blessing. Father in heaven, as these two come before you, Rebecca and Samuel, to unite their lives together, you have seen and heard the vow that they've made to each other. And you've heard how they have also wish to have you in the center of their lives and their home. And so we ask now, Lord, that you'll bless this union. And you know all that's in store, and you have grace and abundant love and joy to supply to them every day. And so we ask this blessing for them. We ask that you'll keep them day by day and help them that the journey they begin now will remain on the path which leads upward and that they may receive that promise of being together in the heavenly home, which we all wish for. And we pray that that may come soon. But in the meantime, through whatever path of life they may walk, we ask your guiding care and your hand upon them, that you'll bless them richly. And we thank you that your love reaches to this moment and this place, and that you will give a special blessing to these two. Please encourage each family that's gathered here that we also may remember the love that brings us together and be inspired to walk together through this life and to love one another. We thank you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. Give me now a kiss the ride. You all make yourselves comfortable. We're going to go and sign some paperwork.
Gut, da bist du ein Herr, nicht? Die Hände halt auf die Schaule. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Wiseman.
oli mitään totta. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. I hope you're all um, enjoyed our wonderful ceremony. And um, we just thank God for bringing us together, and we're just very happy, very very happy. És még ide szeretném hívni Bencét, Magyarországon, aki képviselünk. Nevek a jó helyen lesz, nagyon szép esküvő.
I just don't know if I can bring it on the lawn itself and I don't know where the owner is. Well, I can shoot from where my car is. Yep. On the edge of the lawn. Yes. Everyone facing that way. Yes. So they're not looking yes. at the sun. Yes. So you're like this, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Stay when you get to just film everybody else. Is that music? No. Yeah. Kevin, can we have Terry's ute? Just back up over here where his car is in the archway. Terry's ute with the train, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, where's Terry's? Terry's <laughs> 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 and that was what was left. He's snuggling and giving me all the cuddles. Where is he gone? <laughs> yeah, just keep rolling for a bit. What are you on the private one now? Are you still on the, on the Wi Fi? Let him have it down then. Oh, at the end? Nice, nice, nice. I'll, um, I'll, ask, Rebecca. Know, I'll ask Rebecca then. Take a photo of you, he just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Stay together a little bit, we'll just take a sorry. I can start the chat. Still stream. Still stream. I'm thirsty too, you can me a drink. But then come back. Okay. Oh, we had one missing. It's like this one, there were three. And smile. <laughs> Ready, <laughs> set, cheese. <laughs> there we go. It's not hard to find inspiration when I start thinking. Thank you. 
And the parents will be behind you, yes. and then we'll get yes. them in behind you, yep. okay? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to... Don't go in the shade. Okay. Come on, folks, let's go. Let's move in. Boys, stay there. I can help round them up if you like. Yeah, yeah. We're starting there with the gentleman is. We're making a straight line with the wedding party up front. Yep. Parents and so forth. All right. Wedding party yep. Let's close the gaps. So we'll get the wedding party and we'll push them in, yeah? Yep. Where are they going, Gary? Right here. Right the this will be the front row. Right where you are. Right, mate. The kids, all the kids can come at the front. Little ones, the children, front row. In front of the wedding party. All you guys at the back come in and close the gaps. Stop there, guys. Stop there. You guys at the back come in and close the gaps, please. This end here, let's close the gaps. Move right in place, sir. 
Yeah, and make sure that you can see my face because if uh, you can't, I can't see you. There's lovely, lovely ladies down here. They're hiding in the back there. Come forward, please, ladies. That little cute one, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just come forward. Come. <laughs> come on, God. Just come forward. You're beautiful. Come on. <laughs> These folks over this side, please come in. There's a bit of a, a space here at the, at the back here. At, at the back row. <laughs> the guys at the back, could you make um, come on this hand here to close the gaps? Otherwise, it looks like looks like Sydney Harbour Bridge, <laughs> like a sausage. <laughs> Gentlemen, there with a hat. A bit to your left, please, sir. In between the gaps. No, no, not you. You're good. You're nice and tall. Okay, so a bit to your right. Keep going. Both of you, yes. In between the gaps there. Okay, stop. That young bloke next to you on your right, I can't see him. Mate, go over there. Look, heaps of spot, a room over there. Come on, sunshine, let's go. Now, can you all see me? Are you sure? The kids, all these little kids, they can come right at the front of you. Come on, children. Three, eight. 